Let's go, let's go, let's go. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy. We in this Friday with the last show. It's the Rico Report. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. Y'all know how we do. Right, have a good time today, baby. The only way we know we can. Folks, welcome to the Buffalo Fanatics. This is the Rico Report. How are you guys doing on a Friday evening? It's a little late start for me today. Y'all know how I do, man. I have that, that night shift, man. So when you, if you don't get your sleep tight, you're going to be all, all over the place. But you know what? I can't, I can't go without having a show for y'all today, man. So this is going to be more of a, a fan-centric show. We are going to be just chopping it up, man. Uh, but we are going to talk about some things uh, prior to that because, uh, I mean, we got to talk about the Bills, man. We do. That's that's our team. That's our squad. We got to talk about them. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I got to give a shout out to the Montreal Canadiens, man. I'm not a hockey guy. You guys already know I'm not a hockey guy. But you got to you got to give credit to the damn Canadians, man. They're the representing for Canada, and uh, I mean, shoot, everybody knows, man. Hockey's hockey's hockey in, in Canada, man. That's that's what we do around here. Um, so the fact of the matter is, the underdog Canadians are going to the cup. You know what I'm saying? Led by Carey Price, that boy is just uh, unstoppable right now. That goaltending is is top notch for Carey Price. And that's all. That's as far as I know. <laughs> I ain't about to go in. I'll, actually, I do know this. I know that the the teams coming out of the West, I think it's the West, or the two American teams that are still playing, uh, they're the better team. They are the better team, apparently. Tampa, what, didn't, didn't they just win the, the Stanley Cup last year? And uh, I don't know who, who else they're playing. They're playing somebody else. That's supposed to be, both teams are supposed to be better. They're going into a game seven. It don't matter, because I think the Canadians are, are destined to, to, to win it. 28 years. That, doesn't that sound familiar? 28 years before, you know what I mean, we've had major success. Well, that's the Canadians for you. And right now, they're chilling, waiting on their foe. So, I mean, shoot. You got to give the, you got to give the, give, give credit to the Habs, man. They're doing it, man. So, what's up, everybody? Brian Barrett's in the building. Chris Janky in the building. What's happening, Chris Janky? Don Keith, my lady, Rich G. I see you, Mr. Seals. I see you, man. Brian Bowers, you still hitting that gym? Yo, fam, you need, I, I'm telling you right now, man, I have put on some weight. I carry it pretty decent, but I should, I shouldn't be at the weight I'm at right now. I think I'm, I'm put, I'm at, I'm sitting at like two, 205, 207 on a heavy day, 207 on a good day, 204. I need to get my, I need to get myself nice, you know, to, to that crisp 195. Then I'll be, I'll be, I'll feel all right. I feel okay, but I haven't done anything. So I gotta get back in. I gotta get back into this gym, man. I got not even in the gym. I just gotta get active again. And when I see Brian Barrett squatting, squatting and bopping, hitting the bench press, how much can you press? Are you are you are you pressing? Can you can you do two twenty five? Two plates? You pump that? If you can, man, good for you. Good for you. So, folks, welcome to the show, man. We are going to um, we are going to. <laughs> wife says, no, no, no. I love it. You love what? You love grabbing them rolls. <laughs> I'm I'm getting that what do you call that tire? It's like I, I got a little mini tire happening right now. I gotta I gotta get rid of that tire, man. I gotta go back. I gotta get back to it. I gotta get them dips. I gotta get them dips in them hips. <laughs> That's what I gotta do, man. Oh my man, my man said he's repping 225. You just rep at that. You don't just max out. That's what you rep at. Look at this guy trying to stun on me. Trying to stun on me, Brian Bowers. All right, my man. I see you. I see you, man. Uh so folks, let's um let's get into it. Um First of all, welcome, everybody. If you guys are going to be perusing through YouTube, there's a channel out there that is uh, ripping off our content. And I don't want to say ripping off our content, but they're they're downloading content from BF, downloading content from hashtag sports, my guys over there. And there's just a whole bunch of content creators for bills, and they're just putting it all on their channel. And trying to, you know, I'm trying to get some love. I, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Truth be told, uh, is it, is it uh, flattering? No, not really. You know what I'm saying? Make your own shit, and then you know what I mean. Go, go, go ahead. Don't be ripping and putting a whole bunch of stuff on there, nah, fam. If the people want what they want, they'll go to the source. They'll go to the sauce, 
and that's over here. Not not this Buffalo Bills TV. You know what I'm saying? So um, but the licensing says that they can they can reuse footage from anywhere else. So it's it, it is what it is, but nah, fam. We ain't we ain't biting that. We ain't biting that. But uh uh what's good, people? Um, I ain't sweating it. Don't don't stress out. Trust me, I ain't sweating it. I am not sweating it. Uh, there is only you know what? CR, you just said it, man. Rico, you are the original. I feel you, and I appreciate you. I do appreciate you. Um, fam, people, my family, I gotta talk to y'all, man. I gotta talk to y'all. We gotta take care of ourselves in this damn pandemic, man. This pandemic is coming to an end. It seems as though uh people are getting them vaxes, them jabs is what they want to call them. Uh, and good for y'all if you guys are doing it. And uh, things are starting to open up again, so life can somewhat go back to normal. But I, I don't know if normal is going to be normal anymore. However, we as gentlemen, as as men, have to go back to kind of eating all right. You know what I'm saying? Getting active and doing stuff. And I, it starts with us. We've got to do it, fellas. we got to take care of ourselves, man. So I just want to get out that, get that out there and motivate myself. I have to say it to you guys so I can motivate myself to do it. Damn it. That's what I got to do, man. <laughs> Real talk. Uh, my girl Don says, hey, there's a YouTube channel for people who have live life-size sex dolls, too. Oh, okay. And it's live. It's <laughs> It somehow got stuck in the sports live section this evening. Are you sure, Don? Or are you just trying to plug your own channel? Don? Are right, you? Yeah. I'm on to you, Don. I'm, I'm checking it out, though. I'm a freak like that. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> if my girl Don is, is, you know what I mean, doing live sex shows uh, and with the dolls, so be it. You don't got a front. Just own it. Own it, Don. I'm playing. I'm playing with you, girl. I'm playing with you. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Don. Uh, anyway, let's get into it, folks. Uh, we're, this show, the tonight show is going to be about fan experiences, uh, good and bad fan experiences. When you've gone to the Bills games, what have been your uh, best seats? Where, where, If you're not a season ticket holder and you just get tickets and you go to wherever you go, where, where are the best seats to sit? Uh, I'll share some of my experiences, good and bad, where I've where I've sat as well. Um, but this is going to be a call-in show. And I know it's a late night show. So if y'all are not really feeling it, you just want to chill out and vibe out, then you know what? I'll do what I do cuz you know that's 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 my thing. That's my niche. You know what I mean? To chat it up with y'all and then have a good old time, right? Um so that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, I'd love to hear your experiences. What have you guys done? And if you are catching this on the replay, Hit me in the comment section. Yo, I had this experience happen to me when I was at a away game. I had this really good experience because I met these people and they were amazing. And or I met these horrible people. And here's what happened. I'd love to hear your experiences uh, because I'm sure there are a whole ton of them. Shout out to my guy, Ryan Thiel. I got a feeling. What's going on, fam? Uh, sup, everybody. Been busy for a minute. Smash them mother effing likes. Yo, I will give my guy, Ryan Thiel, love because this boy is consistent with it consistent with it so uh shout out to you man real talk so um let me get right into my first topic dawson knox dawson knox man i remember when when dawson knox came to i think it was the year before was it last year or the year before that i had dawson knox as my x factor actually it was last year because i said yo cole Beasley's coming through gabe davis now we got Diggs, john brown like, oh, we're, Dawson Knox, is, it's going to open things up for Dawson Knox. I tend to be always, in anything that I do, I'm always, like, a, a too too soon when I make certain uh, predictions. I'm always too soon, right? And then whatever whatever prediction I, I, I decided to make or whatever, it ends up happening, like, a year after. I'm like, oh, see, that was too soon. So I'm going to try it again. Although I've been very hard on Dawson Knox, I'm going to try it again. And I think that he might have a breakout year. Now, he, you're probably wondering, like, well, hold on. Rico, you were ripping his ass not too long ago that he needs to get his shit together. He still needs to get his shit together. That does not change. But I think that he will put it together. But why is he going to put it together? Well, folks, let me take a sip of this Perrier water. You got me like Kevin Samuels. But Kevin Samuels is drinking some bullshit-ass Red Bull. I'm drinking that Perrier water. I don't know if Perrier is much better, but it tastes pretty good. Hmm. So, Dawson Knox is now part of Tight End University. Tight End University is being run, or I guess facilitated by, Kittles, Kelsey, and former player Greg Olson. And you've got a whole bunch 
of the up and coming tight ends in the game, right? Wifey's asking me if it's a new hat. No, girl, it's not a new hat. Stop trying to watch what I'm doing, okay? Leave me alone. So, <laughs> somebody said pinky out. Yo, let me get that pinky out, bitch. <laughs> yo, yo, you stupid. Whoever said that pinky out was that D handsome? Yo, pinky out. <laughs> pinky out. Let me get that pinky out. Anyway, um, when it comes to when it comes to um the tight end position, it's such a crucial, a crucial and um game, it could be game changing position. When you see the top notch guys that are out there that are doing it, how valuable are they to their team? You look at Travis Kelsey, that man and that boy's solid, man. Be even before Travis Kelsey, a guy, a guy like Tony Gonzalez. You know what I'm saying? A guy like uh, Gates from uh, from out of San Diego, from the Chargers. You know what I'm saying? Like Antonio Gates. Like those guys were game changing tight ends, man. And we haven't had that in a long time. And I'm talking about a game changer. Not no Jay Reamers, ma. Not no, not no Scott Chandler. You feel me? Like. Hey, like we haven't had like that game changing type of tight end. Now I'm not saying that my guy's gonna be a game changer. I'm not. But I think he I think that when you're around very talented players, you're around very intelligent players, you're 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 picking up the nuances of the game, you're you're gonna pick something up, something or two, maybe three, that you're gonna bring back to our offense, and that's going to elevate our offense. Because that was one part of our offense last year. Excuse me. Although being a number two offense. Hold on. Olsen's with the Saints. I thought he, I thought he retired. I thought he was done. Seals, are you sure? You let me know. I, thought he, I, th I actually thought he retired. But anyway. Um, the point I'm trying to make is this. When you're around very talented people. You learn things. And I'm. I'm. You go to your first Pro Bowl. If you go to your first Pro Bowl and you're hanging out with all the all-stars from, from the league and you it's your first year making it because you had a breakout year, fam, you're going to ask questions. Thank you. Chris Jenke, I knew Olsen retired. Somebody said he was with the Saints. I'm like, nah, I ain't tripping. Anyway, so you, you learn things. You learn things along the way. You, you start asking the guy that's been in the game 15 years or 12 years, man, is my it's an honor meeting you and this that and the third and you start learning things and you're like oh man I didn't yo you do this you do it like that then you go into next year learning from all these greats potential Hall of Fame guys in these All Star games and then you take back to your team what you learn I let me give you a personal let me give you a personal uh, story um, I'm not even trying to stunt but it's just like what I was able to learn so I went on a whim and tried out for Team Canada back in 04 for juniors. We went to Houston to play ball, right? And uh, I was like, you know what? I think I'm good enough that I can, I can at least push to make a roster spot. I may not start, but I can push to make a roster spot because I know my skill set. I can bring something. I got hands. I can catch. I'm quick enough. I got vision. Let me see what I got. I end up making the team. So I'm like, holy shit. I, I had confidence in myself. I knew I could do it. But it was the two-week camp before we went to Houston to play that I was learning so much. I was learning guys that are going to CIS football, that are going into the CFL, that played in the CFL. I was playing next to guys that played in the CFL. So I was learning a whole bunch of shit. I was like, golly, how you did this? And the certain things with, you, with your hands and your vision, what you're looking for, and coaches, coaches that, that coached in the, C, in the CFL, head coaches. So I was, learning, I, was learning, I was learning a whole bunch of shit. So then I'm like, all right, so the whole experience ended. We got whooped. Actually, we held our own against Houston. We played, it was a Texas team. We held our, we held our home against Team USA, which is just all freaking all of Texas. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they had, you had all of Canada on one team, right? You go, to, you go to Houston, and it's just a Texas. You might as well just put a Texas high school team. And we did all right. But then... In the round round, we did all right, but then they whooped the shit out of us in the real game. I think it was like 38 nothing. Then I knew, yo, these Americans do football different. <laughs> Mad different. But anyway, 
So as I'm as as I came back to Canada and I'm going on to my my summer team, yo, the things that I learned, it's craziness. I was uh, I was above everybody else just by the knowledge that I got. How to work out, what we were eating, da da da, da all that bullshit, right? So when Dawson Knox is sitting here at tight end university with all these solid ass players, fam, there's no way he walks out of that without catching on to something. And when he comes back to the Bills offense with one of the best quarterbacks in the game, how could you not come back with something and contribute to the team? Man, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So I'm I'm gonna call it again. I was wrong last year. I'm wrong a lot. But I'm hoping I'm right this time. I was wrong last year, but I, I have a feeling that Dawson Knox puts it together, man, and he has he has his best season. He has his best season ever. And we're going to be like, yo, this might be one of the up and coming tight ends in the game. I'm hoping that this year, and I could be wrong, man, but I feel it. I feel it. I feel that he's he's going to, he's going to, he's he's gonna have to. You can't go to a tight end university and take nothing from it. You can't do it. I can't see it happening. Shout out to my guy Bobby Ray says, yo, you see Knox almost take out Kittle's knees on the sideline? <laughs> No, I did not see that. <laughs> Yo, they're about to boot his ass out. Then he's not going to learn shit. Yo, <laughs> you didn't go to tight end university to get booted out of tight end university because you took out one of the guys, the one of the best tight ends in the game's knees out. I didn't see that. You better apologize. You better apologize like a mother. If I'm telling you. But anyway, so if Dawson Knox comes in and can give us a fraction of learning from the Greg Olsen's from the George Kittles, from the Travis Kelsey's, from all the other greats that are there. Yo, fam, we could have a very big year in the st- in for, for Dawson Knox's standards. So 25 receptions, 26 receptions goes up to maybe 45 receptions, 50 receptions. That's actually excellent. That means there's trust going his way. That means... There's no more, ah, uh, I'm not going to go to you. I'm going this guy. Uh, there's Dawson Knox. He's open. Uh, I don't think he's going to catch it. Nope. You know what I'm saying? No more little dump offs here. We're going to trust you to go downfield and catch that and make a play. I, I really, I'm speaking that into existence, man. I think we can make it work. So I'm looking, I'm going to be looking very much forward to seeing what my guy can do. Chris Janke, what's good? Rico, do you think Dable and the Buffalo offense values the tight end position at all that much. I think they do, man. Don't forget, Brian Dable was a tight ends coach prior to being offensive coordinator. So he has love for the tight ends. And if he has one that's worthy enough, that's got it up here, he will utilize them. Brian Dable doesn't give me the impression that he's going to shy away from a a solid player. If Dawson Knox is dominating his his opponents, and they can't cover him, there's no way he's not going to attack the weak link on the defense if Dawson Knox is exposing the heck out of them. He's, he's going to learn something at tight end university, T-E-U. He's going to learn something. Can I do that? T- T-E-U? I'm saying, man. That's corny as hell what I just did. But you'll catch it. He's got to learn something. And if there's some trust between quarterback and tight end and Brian Dable sees that, yo, expose the defense and let's keep going at Dawson Knox because they're going to be worried about Sanders. They're going to be worried about Diggs. They're going to be worried about Gabriel Davis. And they're going to be worried about Josh Allen taking off. This is where Dawson Knox should take full advantage. He's in the prime position. He better learn everything he's got to learn from Tyler University. He's got to be like Ryan the Temp and taking notes. If you guys watch The Office, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. He's got to be like Ryan the Temp and just sitting there taking notes. And then when he gets back to his dorm room, he's doing whatever he's got, whatever he's got to do to retain all that information. I'm just saying. So, fam, 
Dawson Knox, this could be the year, man. This could be the year that you come in and, and you show out. I can't see how you can't make this work. We've got too many offensive weapons on this team for you not to expose the defense. And here's another here's another point that I think that I'm going to make. They're going to show no respect for Dawson Knox. They've seen the footage the last couple of years, two, three years. They've seen what he can bring to the table, and they're not going to be shook at all. Yeah, he's athletic, but he can't catch, he can't catch the ball. He's got no concentration. So I'm not going to be really worried about him. So guess what? They're going to be, while they're disrespecting you and letting you run, run wild because they know you ain't going to catch the, catch, the, catch the rock, guess what? This is where you prove them wrong. I learned something at TEU. Here I go again. <laughs> Here I go. That's what I learned at TEU. I'm just saying, man. So Dawson Knox, man, big year coming for you. I feel it. I tried to give you props last year. I said, this is the year he's going he's gonna to expose a whole bunch of defensive cats that are going to try to cover him and dud. So I'm here's hoping that he doubles up his catches. Doubles up. From 25 catches, what, you had 25, 24 catches last year? Let's get him up to 48 catches. And to me, that's a success. That means there's trust. That means he's moving. He's working. And I'm, he's going to learn something. That's the way I look at it. By the way, shout out to everybody tuned in right now. Do me a favor. Smash that like for your boy. And we're moving on to the next point. So I had um, I had Jeffrey Seals. Jeffrey Seals hit me up on my Twitter. And this is what I appreciate from, from fans that watch. And I don't want to call you fans. I want to call y'all supporters. Um, you know what I'm saying? The audience. You know what I'm saying? BF. The fanatics. I always ask y'all, man, if y'all want if y'all want me to bring something up that you feel like I'm not bringing up or nobody's really talking about this, man, you find me on Twitter, find my email, and hit me up and say, yo, man, I think you should talk about this. I, I have no bones about it. I'm not going to say, I've got my own notes. No, thank you. Go pass it on to somebody else. Nah, man. Content is content. So my man, Jeffrey Seals, hits me up. He says, hey, man, I think you should, you, you should talk about a couple things. Do, it, do what you will with it. I was like, man, I'm always listening. And he says, who are T, and, and this is a question for everybody. Who are people, yo, Brian Barris, salute to you, man. I appreciate you coming through, man. I'm going to catch up to you, bro, because I see you hitting that gym heavy. Don't let me get in that gym, boy. Get all sexied up for, get all sexied up. Don't let me do that. I mean, going to have a hot boy summer. But if it was up to my wife, she'd be like, hot boy summer, what? Boy, sit your ass down. There ain't no hot boy summer for you. You got three kids. Shut your mouth and get on the grill. Go barbecue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, guys. Can't have a hot boy summer. Wife says I got to go barbecue. You know how many men that are like that, by the way? Wifey runs them. Where do you think you're going? Oh, I was just going to go and hang out with the fellas. No, you're not. You've got laundry to fold. Did I tell you to fold the laundry? <laughs> there are a lot of men in here that are like, yo, fam, don't expose me. That's exactly what it is. That a really shit. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I doubt that you guys are in that position. But, yo, fellas, we can still have a hot boy summer somewhat in the backyard. We can have a hot boy summer on the driveway. We can have a hot boy summer when we're going to the drive-thru and picking up, you know what I mean, a couple things for uh, the wifey and bringing it back. We can still have a hot boy summer. A little round, a rounder hot boy summer, but we can still, we can still do it. We can still do it. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I digress. So, anyway, let me get to it. So Gary Seals is like, hey, fam, let's talk about last year's roster and who we miss or who we will miss. Because this question was, who who do you think who do you think is uh, is going to be missed on the roster from last year? I was like, who will we miss on the roster, or who do he says who do we miss? I was like, I don't know about who do we miss, but who will we miss? That's a great, that's a I mean that's a great question. And by the way, Don. I love that. Hot dad summer. I could F with that. Hot dad summer. <laughs> HDS. We're doing it. Yo, Ryan Barber says, yo, does your, does your wife have a sister? Nah, but you got a whole bunch of friends, man. But they're taken, Ryan. They're taken. Sorry, big fella. Donkey says she has, she has a question. She says, uh, Knox lives in Nashville offseason, doesn't he? 
Does anyone know if he's going to continue to work out uh, at Kittle's barn gym until camp? I have no idea, but that's something we can try to find out. We can definitely try to find that out. So who will we miss in the uh, from the 2020 season? A lot of people might say John Brown. A lot of people might say that. I don't know if we're going to miss John Brown. We didn't. Miss, we certainly didn't miss him last year. Did you miss him? Oh man, I wish we had John Brown in this game. Oh wait, we got Gabe Davis. My bad. We good. Let's keep it real. And and if we're really gonna keep it real, dad bods are in. I'm gonna say it right now. All these six packs that everybody trying to get, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get them lats. You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to look chiseled up, trying to get that little V. You guys know what I'm talking about. That little V to the to the midsection. And the females don't want that no more, man. They want comfort. They want. <laughs> they want. They 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 don't want to be. Uh, if I could keep it real, they don't want to be intimidated, man. They just want to have yo like. What are we eating? We are having burgers and fries and, and chips, and we're gonna watch Netflix. Cool. That's what they want. I can't say that's what they want because there's some girls that are like, yo, I want my eight pack. What for? What you going to do with all that? It's uncomfortable. I used to be there. You know what I'm saying? All that. It looks good. But at one point, you're like, yo, I got to maintain this shit. Here I go. Here I go. Maintain. Then you get tired of that shit. Yo, fam, I'm good. As long as I have a little definition in the chest a little bit. None of these are sagging. It looks all right. You know, dive bouts are in. And if I've I actually had this argument, and I'm, by the way, I'm going back and forth from football to just life talk. We just that's how we do it on a Friday because the chat is chat seems like that's what they want to talk about. But at one point, <laughs> at one point, you got to get to a point where like, yo, I'm good with what I look like, and wifey's gonna be like, yo, I like it. Comfort. Let me just lay my head right here. Am I speaking facts? I, if I'm not, and if you guys like to, nah, man, we hit the gym 24-7. We, we bench pressing 225. We doing all that stuff. All right. But I tell you, once you get kids and once you get all that stuff and left come, starts coming at you, you ain't got time for that. You can try to maintain it. Just don't get out of, don't get out of whack. Then you're okay. There's dad bods and then there's obese. <laughs> There, there are dad bods, and then there's obese for sure. So here's the question: what, what signifies a dad bod? Because there are guys that are just have no definition, no muscle. They're just a regular old, regular ass dude. We're gonna call you R RDs, regular dudes, right? No abs, no definition, no nothing. A little bit of a gut, not even a gut. I won't call it a cut. A little pouch, if you will. I even hate that word for men. A little pouch. If you have a pouch, then so be it. Is that a dad bod? Or is a dad bod, you're a little bigger, a little wider, no definition anywhere, heavy set. Or is that just, you're just a big boy? What is a dad bod? I'd like to, I, I mean, I think the, 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 the right combination of dad bod should be like former athlete meets he stopped working out, and now he's picked up some weight. So there's a bit of both. That's what I see as dad bod. No? Ask, <laughs> yo, D. Ham says, yo, I'll ask my wife. <laughs> Go ahead, man. William Reddy says, yo, for us big guys, we fluffy women love that too. All right. <laughs> oh, snap. This is I completely went the wrong way on this, man. But I'm just saying. Morse has a dad bod. Okay, so a big boy. Bit of a gut. But he owns it. Okay. All right. <laughs> My wifey says, you got to have him stocky. From the, when Seinfeld, when Elaine was talking about it, she wants a stocky guy. Like George is stocky. Slash dad bod, no? Some would say that. Kramer is a dad bod. I don't know. 
Y'all tell me which is a dad. What 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 is a consistent dad bod look like? Are there a whole bunch of them? I'm I'm curious. Now let's get back to the football talk. I apologize. So this 2021, the 2020 season, who are you missing? So John Brown is one name that I would say some people miss. You think I, I think I know who I'm gonna miss the most. Andre Roberts. And you're probably gonna be like, ooh, that's a good one, Rico. But Andre Roberts also took up a, a spot at the receiver position. So you're really dealing with five receivers other, other than six because he never really got on the field. And when he did get on the field, it was, it was lackluster. It wasn't, anything, it wasn't anything worthy. Just saying. So it makes it very interesting. By the way, I got to give a shout out to my girl, Chelsea Harrington. Let me give you a little. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> bing, biggity, bing. Welcome to the damn bing squad, my girl, Chelsea Harrington. What's up, my girl? We're talking about dad bods in football. We can do it. We can definitely do it. So who are you missing from the 2020 season? Andre Roberts for me. John Brown might be for others. Is there anybody else that stands out to you that you're like, yo, we, 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 we didn't give them a chance. I'll give you another one. Quentin Jefferson. I really think that we, we, we didn't utilize Quentin Jefferson the way we wanted to. I think he would have been a, a good piece to keep. But they see something in Butler over Jefferson. If you want someone that could do everything, Jefferson was your guy. He can play inside. He can play outside. He can hold up on the front. He can play three. Ta- I mean, he was all over the line. But we let him walk. That one was a surprising one. I thought we were going to keep Jefferson rather than keep Butler. Lee Smith. You guys are going to miss Lee Smith? Really? Interesting. I, get, I know he was good for the locker room. That is for damn sure. He was definitely good for the locker room. Ooh, A Cash. <laughs> At Cash, AK Cash says, uh, Bjorkes. Bjorkes is going to be one that they miss. Are you really going to miss Bjorkes? Next thing, you're not, next thing I'm going to hear, you guys are going to tell me you're going to miss Schmitty. You're not going to miss Schmitty. Are you going to miss Hauschka? Hausch money. I don't know, man. Ooh, you know what? Dean Marlowe. Very good, Ryan Robert. Double R. Dean Marlowe has followed Coach McDermott everywhere he's gone. And now I think Dean Marlowe's in Detroit, I believe. Yeah, Dean Marlowe might be a guy we miss because he was good depth. He was solid depth. You can count on him. That you won't lose a step. If Hyde has to go out and Dean Marlowe comes in, you're like, I can deal. Not on the same level, but he's not going to lose you anything either. Great call on that. By the way, great topic by Jeffrey Seals. So from the 2020 season, a guy that's not on our roster right now, who do you think you're going to miss that? "Mm, I think we gave up on that guy too soon. I think we could have kept that guy. For me, number one is Andre Roberts. Because you knew whoever was back, you're kicking the ball, he's, he could take it away. He could take it away for, take it to the house at any moment. Now we have a big old question mark because we have no idea who's going to be our return guy. So that would be very interesting. But I really do like that. What about Quentin Spain? Do we do you think we missed Quentin Spain? I mean, it was unfortunate how how things transpired, but do we do we miss Quentin Spain? Because I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, when we had Quentin Spain the year before full time, we could run the ball. Frank Gore was running the rock hard. Devin Singletary was pushing 770, 770 yards. And then the whole Quentin Spain situation happened, and then we just couldn't do what we could do. We couldn't do it. We couldn't run the book. We couldn't do anything. So are we missing? Are we missing Quentin, Quentin Spain? I don't know if I am or not. But we didn't, we didn't really replace him either. With anything special. 
Pierre Kingpin says, yo, returning kicks is such an underrated art. Roberts will be a big, he will be big shoes to fill. That's the number one guy I think we're going to miss, man. Real talk. That's the number one guy we're going to miss. Martian says, John Brown, not that we don't have the talent. I'll just miss the dance. I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody's ever asked him what the f that dance was. I liked it. Because that's the type of dance you do that you so hype, you don't know what to do with yourself and you just... You just, I don't know what he did, man. He just cross, cross arm, bushwhacker, <laughs> Jim Duggan. I don't know. There was a whole bunch of stuff. If you guys didn't know, I'm a, I'm a wrestling head. So you're going to, I might, I might drop a few wrestling bars on you. You guys won't even know it. Oh, you guys don't know about that. <laughs> sometimes I get my bag sometimes. But anyway, uh, very interesting. Audrey Roberts, I think is going to be missed. John Brown, not so much. Quentin Spain. I mean, I guess some can say that we definitely did miss some some Quentin Spain uh, Quentin Spain mauling abilities because he was he wasn't he wasn't your 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 stout pass blocker, but he sure could run block. And dude, when we brought him on as as a free agent, he was the number three guard. He was like the number three rated guard that was in free agency. And nobody wanted to touch him. What? And how things have changed. How things have changed, man. But I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm looking at the roster and I'm like, nobody else. Now, you know, one guy that I feel like we shouldn't have, we shouldn't even wasted a spot on this guy. Well, that was Brian Winters. We should not even brought him on the team. The, if the Jets lets your, lets your ass go. Because they don't feel like you're good enough for them. Come on, man. And then here we go. Giving this guy six, six to seven million dollars to do some bullshit. Come on now. Tripping. Tripping. <laughs> John Brown dance was more like a bushwhacker. For real, right? Uh, <laughs> he did one of these and shit and did one of these, man. I will never forget this. I don't know if you guys remember this. Only, only like if you really watch wrestling, you would know this. But there was a Royal Rumble. And this is near like the very end of these guys' career. You know, when they count people down, five, four, three, two, one. Here comes one of the bushwhackers, right? He comes in, <laughs> walks down. They do this. Boom, boom, boom. He climbs into the ring like an old man. They took them. They took him by the shoulders, took him by the back of the belt and tosses us out the ring real quick. The minute he got tossed out the ring, <laughs> he walked back out into the stadium and out the stadium. That was the exit. Dude, I'd never laughed so hard. Bushwhackers. Classic bushwhackers, by the way. You got to eat. Those are good times. I'm going to tell you, man, I can get into a whole bunch of wrestling stuff, but we can, we can dabble into that. We can dabble into that. But anyway, so when it comes to that, to that roster, those are the guys that I'll miss. Let me, let me go back to that. John Brown, I know some of y'all will miss him. I don't think we will. But some people will. But for me, for sure, is Andre Roberts. Maybe a little bit of Quentin Spain, because that run game kind of took took a took a dip. Um, and Dean Marlowe was a very sneaky one. I like Dean Marlowe. Dean Marlowe, we're gonna miss him too. Good depth, very good depth. Now, let's get right into it. Fan experiences. Have y'all had good experiences going to Bills games? I'm curious. Because there's there's been some good ones and there's been, been some bad ones. I'll I'll have I have mine set up to to kind of get the ball rolling. This is where the the phone lines are open. If you guys want to call in, call in and say, hey man, I got I, I need to experience this 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 story that happened. It's crazy. Y'all need to hear this. I'm all ears. The most I think the most fun I've ever had going to. I've had actually I've had several good times. Actually, I can't lie, man. Every time going to a Bills game is a good time. Except for one time, I had a terrible experience, right? I'll get into it right now. Terrible experience. This was the year that um, Ladanian Tomlinson played on the Jets. And uh, Jets came to town. And wifey and I, was, and I took her to, I think that wasn't her first game. I, th I think, was it her first game or second game? I can't remember what it was. I think it was her, I think it was her first game. It was her first game. I took her to her first game. And I'm like, oh boy, this is gonna be good. We're playing the Jets. 
Tomlinson, I think it was Sanchez was still playing over there. So before we go to the game, wifey was not feeling well. She was not feeling well. She was unsettled. But she's like, no, 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 no. I could go. I could go. I could do it. I could do it. I could do it. I was like, you don't have to go, man. I'll just take somebody else. I take my bro. He's like, no, I could do it. Cool. Drive over there. We pass the border. We're cool. First of all, we're trying to find a damn place to stay. So we stayed at this motel, hotel. I don't know what you call it. Red Roof Motel. If I remember, is it Red Roof? Or Rooster Red? I can't remember what it was. I, maybe you guys from Buffalo would know what I'm talking about. We stayed at this Red Roof or Rooster Red Motel. Golly, what a piece of junk. The Red Roof. I think it was called the Red Roof. We stayed at the Red Roof. Boy, I was like, what are we doing? So we stayed at the Red Roof. We're like, okay. I mean, it's, we're just staying for one night. Who gives a damn? And we're like, okay, so how are we going to get to the game? So then they had limousines that get you to the game. We had like this little ticket thing. Hey, if you want to get to the game, we'll take you. We'll limo you to the game and blah, blah, blah. So we go there. No, she wasn't pregnant. <laughs> Regal wife is pregnant. No, she wasn't pregnant. She definitely wasn't pregnant. But uh, she's not going to let me say what, what her issue was. So I, I'm going to just say she wasn't feeling well. Okay. So. <laughs> So anyway, I'm trying to read if she's saying, yo, go ahead and tell the story. But I, I don't know if she wants me to tell the story. But anyway, she wasn't feeling well. So the whole time we're trying to like, we're trying to like make sure that we're 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 good and we're we're doing all right. And I'm making sure she's cool. She's like, yeah, yeah, she's trying to be a trooper. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're okay. I know she's not, but she's trying to not ruin the moment. That's cool. So we get into this. Oh, I can say it? Okay. So she had is what you get it, what you call is a is a cyst, right? And if you've had a cyst before, it's just a buildup of callus or whatnot, and you just got to get rid of it. But anyway, where she had her cyst is, is the issue, if you know what I'm talking about. And how you get them is, I mean, a bit of a rough play. Your boy was putting in work, right? <laughs> anyway, so she had to take it easy. She had to take it easy. So she can't sit on certain things and whatever. So we go and get in this hotel. We go to the game. We get trounced. I think it was like 38-7. It was raining. It was terrible, bro. And we're sitting there just getting beat down. Thomason is just doing the teacup. You know what I'm saying? Do all that stuff. And she is having a horrible time. And I'm not, I'm, I can't enjoy myself. My team's losing. This one's not feeling well. And it's getting worse and worse as the game's going on. I'm ready to like, yo, let's just, let's just go. No, 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 no. Let's just, the whole situation. Let's just, I'm like, yo, we're getting beat down. This is not good. Let's just go. So finally, the game's over. We go. And I'm like, and she's popping Advil's like, like it's like a Skittles. Just popping things. So now we got to drive back six hours. Fam, we stayed at the Red Roof Hotel. <laughs> that was trash. Then it's raining. Terrible. We play the Jets. We get beat down by the Jets. I don't know if you remember, guys. You guys remember that game? And then on top of that, this one's not feeling well. The whole time. So I'm like, my mind can't enjoy the moment. And it was just a terrible moment. Our seats weren't horrible. They were pretty decent seats. But we got, we were terrible. That was the time we were just no good. Six hours of driving. We went straight to the hospital. She couldn't take it. But she trooped it out. She definitely trooped it out. That girl, I'll give, I have to give her props. But she handled like a G. That's one of those girls you got to, that's your that's ride or die. She, she could have a leg that is no good. Needs to be amputated. But no, 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 we're good. We're good. She, she, she trooped it out. Salute to you, my girl. Terrible experience. So if you guys have had a terrible experience, by all means, jump in and tell me what your terrible experience was or super chat it if you want or join the Bing Squad. You guys already know. Go get that number, call in, and we'll hear your great or terrible experience at any Bills game. Bills game, away game, you name it. Tailgating, if you had a terrible experience at a tailgating, let me know what's good. So I've had fantastic times. I can't, I can tell you like the last time I went to a Bills game, uh, it was the we had the, the BF tailgate. If you guys went to that BF tailgate, that shit, that was our first annual tailgate. We had a great time. There were so many things that we could have done so much better. But for what we had at the time, primo. The one thing I'll never forget. Let me take this phone call. Somebody's calling it right now. We got to take these phone calls in. This is the Rico Report. Buffalo Fanatics, who's this? 
Hey, what's going on, my man? It's Jay Mafia. Jay Mafia, what's good, man? You Are you going to tell me about a, a good experience, bad experience? What do you got? I could give you a good or bad experience. A good or bad experience. Give it I to was going to switch it up on some other shit, but um, let me start off with that. Not too many bad experiences. I just know I've had a lot of experiences where I go to the, uh, to the game, tell Gay a little too hard, and then I go to the game, and I don't know shit. <laughs> but I'm slumped in the stands. So I got a lot of those memories. I bet you do. Or, <laughs> Yeah, the one time, yeah, I had my, my big old Bills flag. And, yo, I was done, bro. We kept the whole bottle of uh, Crown Royal, cases on cases of beer, bro. I thought it was that dude. As soon as we went through, got our seats, bro, I was done. I was done. So. And I had my uh, Bulls flag, bro. And I'm not trying to let my friends know I'm fucked up. <laughs> they tell you good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm good. And then, like, I snuck to the corner and I, like, threw up all over my fucking flag, bro. I was so mad. But then, like, like, you know, and again, we moved up to, like, the front row. My boy was like, yo, you forgot your flag. Go get your flag. I'm like, no, nah, nah, I'm good. Leave it. Leave it. You. No, 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 leave it. I'm not trying to tell him I threw up on it. I'm like, nah, no, nah, nah, fuck that shit, bro. I'm going to go get it. I'm like, nah. So I had to take every ounce of strength in me to get up. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> no, he picked that up. You see big old glass falling off. I ain't mean to get all disgusting, but. No, nah, man, that shit happened. I say that. Like, Those are the yeah, experience, man. That's my work experience. But, um, I mean, no, no, but good vibes. I mean, if I'm not too drunk, man, I, you know, boys be having a ball. One time, my, my, my cousin, uh, it was like after the game, we go to uh, the, uh, the bar at the corner, shit, we getting lit, turning up. And I got some dudes getting too rowdy, acting up. And my, my cousin, he knew the bouncer, the owner, all that, da, da, da. So he told him, like, yo, I, I got you. I, I'll score them out. He's like, all right, go ahead. Anyway, long story short. He a big ass dude, like what, six three, oh, two hundred pounds, uh, big dude. Uh, and the dude's talking stuff. He 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 not that he not he's like what five seven. A little <laughs> guy, fifty. Little dude, yappy yappy yap. My cousin's just standing like on the, on the um patio, whatever, like a good three four steps. Yo, he like then there jumps off, boom, drops him. Now me, I just instinctively pull my pants up. All right, what's good? Yeah, I look around. My man is snoring in the snow. Of course I he is. Night, body. night. <laughs> Yo, it was, it was hilarious, bro. Like, night, he, night. That, I was seeing the snow blowing out his mouth. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm not needed. You, you, know, <laughs> you knew he was done. Yo, before you get out of here, I got to ask you this, though, because I'm, I'm going to ask everybody. How you yeah. feel? How, how, Yo, you wifed up? Yeah, yeah, I got wifey. Okay, got you got wifey. How does, how, how does wifey feel about the dad bod? You got the dad bod? Is she feeling it or is she like, nah, oh, man? Yeah. It's funny that she said earlier about that that tire, bro. I, I got the same joint. Fam. <laughs> that that spirit tire on there, bro. I need to get back in the gym, but it's funny. Yo. Because I'm just I'm so crazy back in the day. I kind of still, if I like that enough, I still got a little four pack, even though I got a belt, beer belly. <laughs> but that don't mean I still got to get the gym, dog. Fam, we but, all got to hit the my, gym. My wife, my wife can accept me, and, I, and I'm happy that she uh, accepts my body because I know I got to give her better. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, I, I know exactly what you're saying, bro. I had to ask you on that because let me, let me give you another little segment for boys to talk about. Um, because I was talking to Steve Tasker on the one dude right. on, on radio and everything. Give it to me. And um, pretty much the helmets. I know everybody ha- happy that we we could get alternate helmets by 2022. Everybody talk about red helmets, but I know we still got till 2022. How do boys feel of a school to service uniform, all black? Oh, I know you've seen the jersey, right? You seen the jersey, Snoopy Survey jersey, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So all black helmet, green logo, all black uni. Just let boys uh, speak on it. Oh, I like that. All right, but fam, J Mafia, I appreciate your call, bro. We yo, you gotta do this more right, often, man. Yes, sir. All Take right, care. Take it easy. Yes, sir. That's my guy J Mafia. Yo, but that's not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? If you attribute to the serviceman with a with an all green or all black uniforms and all that stuff that'd be dope i don't know how they kind of make it work you know what i'm saying alternate like if whoever if it's like but these guys have themes right but in the month of october october was it is like breast uh breast breast cancer awareness month so it's all pink so there's gotta be they're gonna have to try to make some kind of month for um i mean november would be good i don't know what november is but like in terms of incorporating uniform change that would be dope man black all black on everything Yo, that'd be dope. I like that idea, man. That's something that I, I have to look into that and and like make a segment on that and see how you guys feel about that. But that would be cool. Change the uniforms up like that. Because, I mean, all these uniform changes, all these alternates, and we get to go back to the helmets. And fam, that would not be a bad idea. 
that would not be a bad idea. Yo, Rico, are some of your best experiences some of Kevin's worst experiences? <laughs> Actually, Kevin, I, I'll give you one of my best experiences. Uh, so it was last year at the at the tailgate. I brought Kevin with me, and Kevin's a Dolphins fan. So we threw on we threw him we threw him a BF shirt. Yo, put this on, man. I don't want to hear you, I don't want to hear you say shit. You're not gonna wear your your Dolphins gear because you're at a Bills game and it has nothing to do with the Dolphins. Put this on. So he was an honorary Bills fan with us, but um, we had a good time, man. I'll tell you this though. I've never seen this in my lifetime, and I saw it. I said, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I saw a pickup truck. I think it was an F-250 with a long bed. It was like an eight-foot bed. And they had drilled a smoker on top of that damn bed. This one poor guy was grilling the whole time, and it was in September. So it was at least 25 to 35. I'd say 30 degrees outside. And this barbecue is just, just going. And I don't know, but this, I don't know if it's a tailgate thing or it's a Buffalo tailgate thing, but like what's yours is mine is the vibe that I always feel. People are cooking and like, yo, you want some? You want some? Fam, what's yours is mine. That is truly one of the like one of the things I love the most about tailgating at, at Buffalo is you can just walk around. People are having a good time drinking, throwing the football, doing whatever. And fam. Is a good time. So this guy is up there sweating like a mother and just barking and cook, barbecuing and cooking. And music is blaring. I said, yo, this is a vibe. This is a vibe, man. Uh, we had uh, another good experience I had was um, was back, was it a few years ago? Uh, we were at a, a fan fest. Fan fest uh, is run by Nate Gary. Um, and we partnered up with Nate Gary earlier this year when we were interviewing uh, players with White Claw. You guys remember Dana? <laughs> Dana from White Claw? Yeah, that was an experience all, in, all on its own. But anyway, we I brought my brother with me. My man Bobby was there. And we had a good-ass time, man. I was meeting all the players, man. We had uh, – I was I was doing interviews with uh, – who did I do? There's Bruce Smith was up there. Um, Jim Kelly was there as well. Uh, Andre Reed. The whole crew was there. And then on top of that – uh, Fred Jackson was there. So I got a chance to chop it up with Fred Jackson. Cool cat. Um, but yeah, man, that was a good ass experience. And then I think we're playing the Denver Broncos that, that game. And, uh, I mean, you, you guys, you guys know the, 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 the end all be all, but fan great experience, man. The, the, it was a beautiful vibe meeting most people. That was the time that, that was the first time that we were able, able to have a tailgate, excuse me, mingle with the fans and people were starting to recognize who BF was. Cause like we were just kind of getting out there. All our stuff was online, but like actually getting out there and, and meeting with people. Yo, we met a whole lot of people, people that were like, fam, we've been watching you for a minute. Yo, props to you, man. I finally get to meet Rico. Da, 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 da. At that point, I'm like, yo, I was just I'm just a regular fan like y'all. But y'all show mad love. So dope, 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 dope experience, man. Real talk. So um, if you have one, if you guys want to call in and explain a very good experience or very bad experience, uh, y'all let me know, man. Did you guys come across a fight where you're like, come on, man, what's going on? Why are they fighting? There's a whole big old fight. It has anything like that happened? You guys let us know, man. Yeah. I remember that. You remember that game, right? We, we took down Denver. We took care of business against Denver. Um, but yeah, man. So that was it Denver. Or was it the chargers? I can't remember if it was the, Char I think it was the chargers. No, it wasn't the chargers. It was Denver. It was definitely Denver. Um, but yeah, man, good times, good times for sure. Now, what about seats? Where are the where are the best seats in Buffalo? I'm not I'm talking about not you're you're not a season ticket holder. You are not a season ticket holder. I've never had an opportunity to sit up real close. But to me, I don't think I want to sit that close. I want to be able to sit all the way back to really see the field because I used to say like there was man, every seat in the freaking stadium is terrible, but it's not true, man. I can sit, I've sat up where the rock, the rock, what is it called? Rock pile, the rock pile seats. I've sat up there before. Those are seat, those seats are pretty decent. I've sat in the end zone. Those seats are pretty damn good as well. So uh there aren't really any bad seats, but what do you think? What do you think is the sweet spot for seats? If you guys you guys are understanding, you guys know where, where the best seats are, let me know. I'll try to book my seats in, in uh, the next time I'm able to go to a Bills game. I'm gonna try to book my seats in some good ass spots. But if you have any, let me know. As you guys are chiming in, I'm going to take this phone call. I'm getting, get I'm getting a call from the 416. I already know what that is. This is the Rico Report, Buffalo Fanatics. Who am I speaking to? Your boy, Fabrizio Di Maddalena. 
Madalena. D Madalena. Get it right, yo, Rico. Come on, man. <laughs> Get it D, right, man. D Magdalena. Hey, what's my last name, man? Don't fuck up my last name, yo. D Don't Magdalena. What's going name. on, fam? D D D Madalena. Madalena. I got it. I yo, got it. D D Madalena. You gotta realize that the 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 Euro Cup's going on right now too, right, bro? True facts. That's facts. That's facts. What's good, man? What's true, happening? True. True. Okay, now. Okay, now listen, bro. Yeah. I'm a little bit behind of what your stream is right now. Last okay. time I was on it, it was you guys were talking about the 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 change of the helmets. Okay. So where are you at this point in your podcast? I okay. don't really know because so, I've been trying to follow it, but I want to kind of be up to date with what you guys are talking about because I don't want to be humpy behind for the listeners. You know, I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay, so so we- Tommy, 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 yo, Tommy. We've got to be on top of it, right? We have Ma- Madalena. We're going to be on top of it. So we're talking about the we're seats. Where are your best seats? Di Madalena. Di Madalena. Di Madalena. So we're talking about the best seats in, right. the, in the stadium. So if you've been to a game, where are the best seats? Where is the best area to be the sweet spot where you're not too far away, but you're not too close, where you get that money spot? Shit, man. You got to go corner end zone. Corner end zone? Oh. Corner end zone, man. I'm telling you, other than that, it's the 50-yard line. Dude, I've sat up, honest to God, the only place that I've sat myself, honest to God, and I've been, like, up in the bleachers. I've been to, like, about, like, 12 Bills games. Okay, so you and know. they were the bar. I, I, I haven't, every game that I went to, i only seen one loss. Really? But at the end of the day, I was always, always, I was always up in the, uh, I was always up in the bleachers. Yep. That's all right. That's all right. I saw them. It was great. Man, I had the best time of my life. I love watching my bills. I love watching my bills. No the, doubt. The, the fucking bomb ass motherfucker shit. I tell you. <laughs> Anyways. So, but in my opinion, I'd like a corner view on the end zone because imagine seeing one of them goddamn beautiful fucking touchdown catches Fam. right in the corner at the end of a goddamn game. Tell me that one to be the most fucking badass shit. Let me tell you. Tell me that shit. I'm telling you, I Man, agree with that you. Or, that or that, hang on, that or the 50-yard line. The 50-yard is pretty good. It's a little mm. overrated. But, man, in the end zone, I'd like about, I'd, I'd like about, like, I'd say 40 rows up in the end zone on a corner. Because, shit, man, if that actually happens, you got the best seat in the house on a, one, of, one of the most bomb-ass shit touchdowns ever. See, I'm going to agree with you on the – corner seats the corner end zone because i had an opportunity when we played uh kaepernick and the 49ers i was actually in an end zone corner seat actually i brought wifey that was actually one of her best times we she got lit like she was blitzed and she had a good old time kaepernick we just whooped on kaepernick's ass but that seat was money so you're right money that seat was money i'm not gonna lie that's a good that's a good spot my man uh, g seals he says yo corner 10 20 rows uh if you get 10 to 20 rows up you can see, uh, you can see, uh, you can. So, what do you say? Up, oh, can't see far the end zone. Oh, can't see. Oh, they've saying. got, dude, dude. There's a nice, there's a nice, like, you know what I mean, like the grade of it. I've been down there. The grade, you get nice view on it. You know what I mean? You're mm. not, you're not like, you don't got people in your view or nothing. It's really nice down there, man. I'm telling you right now, it's a really nice viewpoint down there, man. You got, and, and then you're like, you got, dude. Everything's close down there too. It's really nice, man. I would love to have gone down there, man. When's the last game you went to? Man, last game I went to, I'll straight up tell you, was the freaking Monday night game, Dallas Buffalo. Let me tell you something. You see how my face is lit up? Bad taste in my mouth. Bad taste in my <laughs> mouth, dude. Bad Yo. taste in my mouth. Dude, I walked out, dude. I That was the first loss. I had gone to like, I went, on, I'm not even straight up kidding you, Rico. I did about 12 straight victories. That's impressive. I, my last game was, my last game was that Monday night, Buffalo. Dallas game. You haven't been back since. <laughs> Dear fucking Lord Rico shit. I still remember it. It fucking killed me almost that night, man. Walking out of that goddamn Fam. stadium. Man. So let me tell you, I was at that game too, right? And I was sitting in the end zone behind. How electric? Wait, wait, Rico, Rico, hang on. How electric did it feel when you walked in that stadium? Bro. The, the electricity. Dude. Couldn't you feel it? You felt it, didn't you? Walking in. You know when you walked in? You know when you walk in the stadium? Hang on. You know when you walk right through the fucking, uh, the, corridor and you see the season, electricity. couldn't you Dude, feel it that night let me tell you it's you where know, i was tell sitting you couldn't. Tell you couldn't. i f- i was right there it's, it's where i was sitting that made it even better because i was sitting behind Stuart was- scott uh steve young 
uh, I think it was Esiason. I don't know who was who's who's um reporting on the Esiason? game. Esiason, what the fuck are you talking about? Esiason, <laughs> was, who was who was reporting on the game? It was Steve Young, boy. Esiason was actually behind the booth who, who, who? talking. <laughs> it was Steve Young, oh, Scott, yeah, Stuart yeah. Scott. Okay, okay, that was really you. They were he was he was calling the game that I, night. I can't remember. I just remember. I ho- like listen, man. The game was hazy to me. It was what oh seven. Oh my god! It was a while dude. ago. But yeah, check this out though. Seven, dude. It was nuts. Fam, when the game ended, I don't know I about were, you. Were, yeah. But you could hear a pin drop. People were oh just god, sobbing. It was, so it was bad. It was. It was so bad, man. Yo, man, I, I, I yeah, you, now, you, now, hang on, now, hang on, on the flip side, Rico, on the flip side, hang on, hang on, hang <laughs> on, can I speak? Go ahead, bro. On the flip side, now, all that pain, mm. all that fucking misery that we have been feeling for all those years, now, hang on, yo, what kind of redemption are we feeling now? Fam, we speak on it. Up. We coming up, we the shit. What's the only one thing that's standing in our way? Kansas Yo. City, that's it. That's the only last. Hang on. Let me, let me, let me just finish. Keep going, boy. You on it. Fuck Kansas. Whatever. Fuck Kansas City. That's it. Let's come and take that shit. We cannot fucking be afraid of that fucking team anymore. Screw them. Listen. Wake up, Buffalo. Come at them. No more. No more being little chicken shit, little brother. Fuck that shit. They ain't shit. You know what? Because we the shit. Let's, Let's go. Bring Let's go. Let's bring it. D- fuck D- them. You know why? D- why? D- why do we have to be afraid of them? Yo, 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 wait a second. Whenever I see a motherfucker in front of me, what, what is it? Ride or die? You, you, you're going to come on me? If, if you're going to come on me, whatever. It's you or me to the end. I'm going to win. So I that's you. how you got to play football. That's it. That's it. There's no other way. There's no other way to play football. So no way that you're going to just like, you know, play your little whatever games or whatever. Get up and wake up to the football game. Let's go. And take it to them. That's it. My That's guy, D. Madalena. I like it. All right, bro. We'll talk to All you, right, man. man. Take care, brother. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something, man. So picture... D Madalena that was just on the line with me. Picture like 70,000 of D Madalenas just going ham. Ham when we win the goddamn Super Bowl. Who we problems. By the way, thank you for the update, Don Keith, about the Bucks. People were going nuts talking about Atlanta's gonna do this, that, and the third. Atlanta squeaked away with a lucky win. Atlanta, we both know. We all know Atlanta should not be there. We all know that. The Bucks are going to take care of business for one. I can't I can't see I can't see them coming through and do all that stuff. Now, nah, you you snuck a win, good for y'all. You know what I mean? Shimmy shimmy all you want. But Giannis Atapacantunto, whatever his name is, man, he's going to get on that ass. I'm going to tell you that right now. Fam, before we get out of here, one more, one more thing I want to bring up with y'all. I gotta find it. And I'm gonna bring it up with y'all. And it's been, a, it's been a nice show, man. We just been kind of chilling and, and just chatting it up. We got a little bit on the on the dad bods. Some of y'all are feeling the dad bods. Some of y'all are not. We got, we got to do something about the, the, the dad bods, though, for real. We can't get that. We can't get that out of hand. We cannot. We can't. We, we fellas, we got to take care of ourselves, man. Best and worst. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Here's another one. Your best and worst experience is wearing a jersey. You're wearing X jersey and you had somebody say, man, because you're wearing that jersey. You're amazing. And they gave you something or because you're wearing that jersey, I'm going to have to fight you because I don't like you. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, have you been have you ever worn a jersey somewhere where there was something amazing that happened? Right. So I'm gonna tell you this. I wouldn't say amazing. I didn't think anything. I don't think it was anything amazing, but it was like a comment that was made. And I was like, at first it was hilarious, but then I'm like, wait a minute. I think I've heard that one before. And it's like a thing, right? So I was wearing yeah, the white wifey knows what it is. I, I went to that Monday night game and I was wearing my OJ Simpson jersey. Do I even have it? Yeah, it's up there somewhere. Actually, let me get that shit. I gotta show y'all because y'all think I'm missing.
I got my OJ, my OJ classic, classic jersey. And I'm sitting there like, wear my jersey. You got you can't go wrong with an OJ, the OJ jersey, man. So I'm I'm wearing my jersey, right? And I'm getting chirped heavy. And I'm like, who are they chirping at? It can't be me. We all Bills fans. Who's chirping at me? I, I hear 32. 32. It's like, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm minding my business, man. I'm like, I, 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 I'm not wanting any smoke today. I'm just going to mind my business. And I hear, that's a killer jersey. I was like, oh, well played, sir. <laughs> well played. I thought that was hilarious, right? And after that, the vibe was on. George Wilson, pick six, taking it to the house. We are just racking it up against the Dallas Cowboys. And then, y'all, you guys already know the rest of the. But I'm telling you right now, man. I'll tell you right now. That was a uh, that was that was an experience. So has anybody had an experience wearing a jersey where you walked in a store, school, work, where it was a, a good experience? You know what? You're wearing a Bills jersey. You can have the rest of the day off, kid. You know what? Your, your Bills deserve it. I don't know. Have you guys had that experience anywhere? That'd be cool. <laughs> Yo, Chris Janky. Sometimes you got to let a guy go off. You got to let a guy go off sometimes, man. I mean, I'm trying to to peel back on me. I don't cuss as much anymore, if you guys have noticed. I try to rein back on the cousin. But, uh, yo, when somebody wants to go off, you got to let them go off. It's authentic. It's the authentic. You want the authenticity of these shows, man. Real talk. But, yeah. Who do I got? I got uh, AK Cash says, yo, training camp 07. First day of camp. Had the Puzlesny jersey taped on my back. Got a new, a few compliments. Yeah, man. That plus that Puzlesny jersey was dope, man. Puzlesny was all right. That boy had no neck. He was like almost like a mini tequila spikes, man. That boy was like just all traps. All traps on that. My man Donnie Brooks says, yo, wearing a Wakefield jersey at game three ALC in Yankee Stadium. I was pelted by foil hot dog wrappers all game. You deserve it. <laughs> you deserve that. You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming to you. <laughs> oh, shoot. That, that's, how, that's funny, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna lie, yo. Somebody said, yo, dad bots, they're too fat to fight. Nah, man. Dad bots got that. They got that dad bot strength. They got that dad bot strength. You better watch out, man. You see a guy with dad bot, don't play around. He might put you in the dirt. He might put you in the dirt, man. Uh, I wore a Bill shirt in the NYC and got credit for being a true fan, but the waiter felt bad for me. This was during the drought. <laughs> Did he give you a free meal? That's the real question. Y'all feel bad for you, man. Yo, <laughs> it's on me, fam. <laughs> it's on me. That would be something, man. Why? What do wife you say? Wife says, "Yo, I always strike up conversations at the grocery store if people have bills clothing and let them know." BF fam, listen. Wife is one a great advocate. Sometimes she'd be like, "Yo, that guy's wearing a Bills jersey." I was like, "Yeah, go see if he if he knows BF." I was like, "Girl, I'm trying to go over there and be like, hey, man, do you know me? Do you know BF?" Nah, fam. It's what it's it's actually it's much better if somebody reacts to you and says, "Hey." I know this logo. So here's one question I have for you guys. Actually, that's that's funny that you bring that up. If you guys have any, if you guys have purchased any BF gear and you've walked anywhere around, has anybody ever said, hey, BF or nice sweater or any comment on any BF gear that you've ever worn? I'm curious to know that. I'm curious to know that because I've had I've had people come, come to me and I'm wearing a shirt and be like, yo, where'd you get that sweater? And I have to, it's actually pretty cool to explain, oh, it's our, it's our, it's our brand. It's our this, it's our that. They're like, are you guys the one that? Yeah. Oh my god. You know what I mean? So it's actually pretty cool to kind of bring that up. Has it happened often? Excuse me. Hasn't happened often. I think it was like once or twice. But pretty crazy to explain that. But have you ever worn a BF merch? BF merch, and somebody recognized and said, "Yo, that's pretty cool." Or I got the same one. Or I got this one. Have you guys ever had that? Let me know. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, Rockefeller CA says, uh, Rico, just getting off work. I have no idea what's going on in the screen. Just pop in and say, what's up? Let's go, Buffalo. What's up, Rockefeller? What's happening, man? I appreciate the love, fam. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Today was a, a late stream. It was a late stream tonight. But y'all rocking with your boy, so that's cool. <laughs> John says, yo, he's cut. he's got a six-pack. Six-pack is there. It's just covered. Yeah, it's, it's covered all right. <laughs> you know what, though? We all truly have a six-pack. It's just covered. That's all. And if and why do we have to why do we have to uncover it? Let's stay covered up. We good. Until we gotta bring the pack out, we just gonna keep it in. Listen, you can have all that strong shoulders and pecs and then that solid belly that you know had a six packs under it. 
but not that not ha <laughs> but not has that sexy coating on top. I'm telling you right now, man. The females, they don't need all that all that hot. You know what I mean? That ripped up all that stuff, man. That's when you were young, in the young days. No more. No mas. J Mafia says, yo, I was speeding 50 in a 25 and the cop pulled me over. I was head, I was head and toe Bill's gear. And the cop just said, slow down, go Bills. See, that's what's up. Now that is what it is. You gotta stop speeding, but that's what's up. Get it. Your Bill's gear getting you out of a ticket? Golly, let me tell you another story, and I'm gonna get out of here. We uh we just, I think I was like 19, 19 to 20. We just had um we just played a football game. And uh, and it was, I think it was Canada Day. Or the day before Canada Day, I can't remember what it was, but everybody was going downtown because Canada Day fell on a on a on a off on a weekday, so we were celebrating it on the weekend. Anyway, so we just had the game that night, and the boys wanted to go out, so we're all driving, and I'm driving the whip, right? And I'm like, ah, oh, we went to we took the wrong turn, so I U turned on a busy ass street. Whoop, did a U turn, and then the car pulls us over. It's like, golly, man, we're gonna pull. I'm getting I'm getting the ticket. So he comes in, goes to the window license id all that bullshit and uh he comes back and he goes okay listen man I'm, I'm gonna let you off and by the way you had a good night you had a good game tonight sir and i was like what he's like i was the, i was the head coach from the team that you played they happened to beat us so he was in a good mood but the fact of the matter is this he knew that we were all on the football team and he's like yo have a good night just be careful don't do that stuff man chill out Woo! that saved me because that was gonna be a big old ticket that was gonna be a big old ticket man so that saved my ass heavy so sometimes, man, being in Buffalo gear will get you out of these tickets, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, real talk. Uh, Chris Jackson says, yo, I have a, I have fat belly, but I just tape $100 bills to my, my tummy. Women don't seem to mind. I mean, that could be the way to do it. Mm. Ooh, you look good. Or, or do those hundreds look good? But either way, we getting it in. Chris Jenke, clever. You are a clever individual, sir. Very clever. Rosebud Squad says, yo, what's up with the Buffalo Bills Mafia fan base? But look at, look out. You beat the hell out of the homeboys, the Ravens, but not this year, baby. We are going to, we're going to be the, what? Who the, Rosebud Squad? Oh, you're a Raven Squad? All right. I mean, get used to it. Get used to it because that ain't going to be the first nor the last. So uh, you're going to have to be the little brother for a little while because Josh Allen's coming up and he ain't coming down anytime soon. But I like me, I like me, my guy Lamar Jackson. So I can't even hate. I like the Ravens. I do like the Ravens, man. So, but you're gonna have to be little brother for a while. Sorry, bro. Sorry, broski. But that's just gonna. That's just what's gonna be. That is just what it's gonna be. Uh so folks, <laughs> Chris Jackie, you funny cat, man. So folks, that's it for me, man. I just wanted to uh, to jump on here on a. It was a late night. I didn't want to have it a late night like this, but I mean, we had some fun. We had some fun, man. We talked about our Bills fans' experiences, uh, good and bad. You know what I'm saying? My man, it, my man, Jay Mafia, throwing up in the damn, <laughs> throwing up in his freaking uh, the Bills flag. Yo, go get your flag. Nah, leave it, man. Leave it. Go get it. Nah, fam, leave it. Oh, God, go get it. Fuck. You don't want that. Here's one thing I don't understand. Why go to, I got to call people out that do this before I get out of here, man. Why go to a Bills game and get so trashed that you can't even go and enjoy the game because they're not going to let you win because you just hammed and you're done. You just you just came for what? To tailgate and drink and just get blacked out? Like, I'll, I'll never understand people that do that. That shit is crazy to me. That shit is crazy to me. By the way, shout out to my guy. Rosebud, I know he's giving love. I love the, I like the, I like the Ravens, man. But he's gonna, he's gonna have to be the little brother for a while. But my boy is a Ravens fan, so he gave us much props. So give, give props to your Ravens, man. The Ravens are a good team, but they're gonna be, they're gonna have to chill out because we're gonna have this for a while. But I can't understand folks that get blackout drunk, getting blackout drunk before the game and just getting messy, because I've seen it. It's messy and it's a terrible look. And now, and then you guys are gonna try to walk to the game. And then you guys are the ones that are going to be cheering on? Oh, no, 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 no. I can't happen. Yo, I don't mind you getting sauced. Get a little saucy, but not blackout where you can't function. I just can't understand that. Some people do it. Some people party. That's, not, that's how some people party. Fam, too much. Too much. But anyway, folks, 
Appreciate you. That's been a show for me. I mean, fam, don't forget, man, this is the off season. The off season, this is where a time of the year where it's like there's not a whole lot popping. There's not a whole lot popping. There's not a whole lot going on around this time. Everybody's on vacation mode for the players. So it gives us a chance to talk about our fan experiences. It gives us a chance to talk about the little things that's happening. The one thing that I do want to see happen is Dawson Knox stepping his game up. And I think this might be the year he does it. I'm rooting for the man. He needs to. He's he's at he's at tight end you. So he's got to learn something. And whatever he learns, bring it back to the squad. Share the news with the others. Let them know what you learned. And have a huge year. This might be the year Dawson Knox has his breakout year for his standards. Does Dawson Knox break out? Let's let's find out. I think we, I think he does, man. I think he does. <laughs> AK Cash is yo. The people that are blacked out at these games, lack of education and substance abuse. <laughs> it just happens. I get it. Sad, but I get it. There are some people who just don't know how to kind of control themselves, man. They just don't. They just don't. Mr. Seals, appreciate you. That's love. So, folks. You guys have yourself a great night. You guys be good to one another. You guys already know what it is, man. And until next time, it's your boy. And I'm gone.